Hey, what's up? It's Hugo here. Today I'm going to cover one of my most frequently asked questions on my channel, which is what settings do I use to export my videos? How do I make my videos look so HD? How do they uh, look so good? Or how do you make the quality so good of your videos? Um, so that's a question I get quite often and I just quickly want to cover it because it's really really easy and you don't really need any special equipment or anything. It just pretty much works with almost any uh, video editing software except for I think iMovie because iMovie has some custom pre-made settings and they don't give you much freedom but for anything else uh, this should work. Uh, first I want to just quickly talk about uh, the software I use to record my videos. I not only record my webcam, my screen, my microphone with it, but I can also edit with it. So I do everything in one single application uh, and that one is called ScreenFlow. The good thing about it is that you can literally, as I said, do everything uh, with one application. The bad thing about it is that it's not free uh, because it's just really good. So of course, uh, good stuff doesn't really always come free. Uh, so you can buy it for $99 or you can try it out for free, although then you do get a watermark on your screen. So that kind of sucks. Uh, but one other link I will leave in the description is this uh, is an educational pricing program. So if you want to get educational discount, if you're uh, a student or uh, if you're at college or stuff like that, you can just, you know, get 10% off with just filling uh, a few information, just filling all your information here and you get 10% off. So that's pretty cool. That's how I bought it it's about three years ago. I bought it. So I've been using it since then. So it's, it's really, really good if you want to do screencasts uh, like this. And by the way, of course, my wallpaper will be in the description. So uh, here's my screen flow. This is my look of the week episode 41 uh, that I've posted a few days ago on my channel. And here I finished editing it and stuff like that. So then I go to file and export. And that's where I pretty much do all my uh, settings for my export and stuff like that. So one thing you need to know uh, before you do the export thing, um, if your screen resolution is 720p, your videos cannot be higher quality than 720p. You cannot make your video a higher resolution than your screen. Uh, that's something some people don't understand, uh, but then it's just upscaled and it's, it doesn't actually look good. Uh, but if you go to, um, if you right click on your desktop and you go to uh, display preferences, it will open up system preferences here and tell you exactly the resolution that you're using. Uh, so here are tons of different resolutions and the top one is always the highest you can use and most of the time it's the one you're using. Um, so as you can see, I'm using uh, 2560 by 1440 is my resolution, but there's tons of different resolutions and different max of different resolutions and stuff like that. So you do need to keep in mind your resolution. So now that I've explained that, it's going to be easier for me to show you what I mean with uh, the export settings that I use export settings sorry so I'm just gonna go back to file export in my screen flow this is pretty much the same in uh, Final Cut Express or uh, even in iMovie you can actually do save movie as and then do a quick time compression I think or quick time conversion whatever uh, you can also get to these settings uh, but there's a lot of different video programs that use uh, this kind of same settings it's kind of always the same with all video applications for Mac uh, out there so except really advanced ones uh, such as After Effects or stuff like that. That's really different. But of course, uh, the first thing you choose is what, what the name's gonna be and where you wanna save it. So that's pretty straightforward. And the next thing is a preset. So I've added some presets here that aren't there by default. Uh, but these here at the top are, are there by default. But what I recommend is just go to uh, manage the settings and then you can create a new preset here if you want to and uh, that's what I tend to do so you don't need to redo all these settings every time but if you cannot do that because not all applications allow you to add presets we're just going to start from scratch so we're just going to go to web high which is the default one and then just click on customize so the first thing of course we want the video we're going to go into settings what I tend to use is h.264 compression is uh, fairly uh, quick to render and it's uh, still pretty good quality, uh, very common used compression type, especially on videos on YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, I tend to put the Cree frames on automatic, leave the frame rate to the current frame rate, and then frame wording, you can do that. Uh, if you're just using footage that you've recorded with the application itself, which is, uh, in my case, uh, the case. For example, here I have my webcam and my uh, my uh, screen, which is recorded with ScreenFlow itself. You don't really need to do frame recording, but if you're going to add other footage, I recommend doing that. And here you can choose the uh, quality. So I tend to do faster encode, so a single pass, and then do the best because multi pass is really not needed because YouTube is going to recompress it and lower the quality again. So really, it's just going to 
pretty much waste your time if you're just going to use it on YouTube. Then you can choose the data rate. You can leave that to automatic for really the best quality, or you can restrict it to a certain data rate, uh, especially if you have slow connections and you want to uh, upload your video quickly, you might want to restrict it to a certain data rate just to make the file size a little smaller. I tend to leave that to automatic because I don't have any problems with my internet connection. It's fast enough. Uh, so I'll leave that to OK. Uh, then you also want to uh, uh, go into settings for the sound. Uh, I tend to leave the format the same. I think this is all the default stuff. And I put the quality, uh, the render settings quality, I put it to best. And then I put the target bit rate to 112 kilobits per second. Uh, I tend, that's the best, um, well, it's quite good quality, uh, especially for my microphone that I'm using. It comes out pretty well on YouTube. And at the same time, it's not too big of a file size. Uh, because the higher, of course, you go in these numbers, the uh, bigger the, your file size is going to be as well. Especially if you have long videos and you have a lot of sound going on. Uh, if you put very high quality sound, it's going to make the file bigger. So, one thing to keep in mind. If you're using the internal microphone on your computer, uh, there's not much use to make it go any higher. Because your actual microphone doesn't even record high quality audio. So, that really depends if you're using a microphone or... Uh, music or stuff like that so what I also recommend you do is if you do use music uh, use the bit rate of the music so if your uh, music is 192 kilobits per second leave it to 192 so you really get the best quality out of it so uh, that's what I recommend if you use music in your videos um, hit OK so these are all the settings I personally use uh, here are preparing for inter internet streaming I just leave it to fast start and then uh, one last thing is the dimension. So you can scale it for 100%, which is pretty much going to be the 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 resolution you recorded the video at, or the the resolution of your footage that you used. Uh, so in my case, as I said, uh, 2560 by 1440 is the screen uh, is the size of my screen or the resolution of my screen. So it's automatically going to set it to 100%, and then that resolution. Or you can scale it to a custom size. Uh, here's 1080p or if you want to do 1280 by 720 that's for 720p on YouTube so you can do that I tend to leave it to 100 do keep in mind that if you leave it to 100 or the higher the resolution the higher the file size is going to be and uh, of course the lower the lower uh, the file size so if you put it to 720p in my case it's almost going to be three times smaller than uh, if I put it to 100 uh, percent so do keep in mind of course the higher uh, the resolution the uh, higher the file size. So that's pretty much all the settings I use and uh, that's what I recommend you use if you have a fast internet connection. Um, do keep in mind when I export my videos uh, when they're roughly 8 to 10 minutes uh, they tend to be around 5 to 8 gigabytes uh, the file size. So the file size is pretty big. If you have a good internet connection that shouldn't be a problem. It only takes me about 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes to upload a video. So that's fine for me. But if you have a really slow internet connection, I highly recommend you make the settings uh, lower and scale it down to 720, for example. Uh, that we really, really reduce the file size. So that's my export settings that I use. If you want to compress it even more, your video, uh, because you have a really slow connection, I know a lot of people have that because uh, I sometimes have uploaded my video with really slow connections. I use this application called um, MPEG Stream Clip, I think it is. There we go. Impact Stream Clip. It's a totally free application. Uh, doesn't no trials or anything. It's just completely free. It's really handy. You can just drag and drop a video inside it. So let's see. Let's put my look of the week 41 here in MPEG Stream Clip. And from there on, you can re-render the file to make it even smaller uh, file size. So what you do is file, and then you go to export to QuickTime, and then you can choose here again uh, H.264, which is up here, and then you can choose the quality. Uh, so I tend to put it to like 90% and then just leave everything as it is or you can just uh, change the um, resolution size to any preset here but I tend to use it like that and then I do make movie and it's going to re-render the whole thing so you can just save it again and trust me this really changes your file size by at least half of it or even more uh, sometimes I've got a file of 2 gigabytes and I can literally take it down to 700 megabytes uh, to uh, just by re-rendering it with MPEG Stream Clip. Now it does decrease the uh, quality of your video slightly, but you don't really notice it on YouTube that much. So I highly recommend to use this program if you have a slow connection. So uh, that's all the tips I have to give you for my uh, rendering your video or exporting your video. 
hopefully it helps some of you video makers out there on YouTube and uh, maybe it will help you improve your videos of course if you have any questions you can comment down below and if I was a little too advanced or talked a little too quickly at some point and you just want to ask something you can also do that in the comments section below I'll thank you a lot for watching be sure to like me on Facebook follow me on Twitter and circle me on Google Plus and like this video uh, if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already once again I'll thank you a lot for watching and I'll see you guys later peace